The Radio Whammo Breakfast. Talking politics with Russell Norman. Well, agricultural scientists say a genetically engineered clover may be able to reduce the methane emissions from livestock such as cows and sheep by 10%. Science scientists from Ag Research and one of its subsidiaries uh, said that they can switch on a gene in white clover to give cows and sheep extra protein. Uh, but there is... Uh, resistance, of course, to releasing GE organisms into the environment. Of course, one of them, uh, one of the uh, areas of resistance is from the Green Party. Russell Norman, co-leader of the Greens, joins us this morning. Good morning to you, Russell. Morning, Whammo. So it sounds pretty good, reducing methane by 10%. This could help um, assist our um, climate change targets and getting them on track? Uh, possibly. It's a, it's, a, it's a big if, of course. Um, I mean, to just to kind of go over the background, they're saying that... Uh, that white clover currently has this gene that turns on that that can turn on tannin production, um, but it's inactive. Um, and so the question is, can that gene be turned on without genetically modifying white clover, um, say with crossbreeding with some other kinds of clover, or do you need to do GE to turn on the the gene in the clover? Uh, and you know, the Greens have always said, you know, GE keep it in the lab. So, you know, we've supported GE research in the lab. The question is whether you want to allow genetically, a genetically modified organism to spread across the whole country. But what's the point in keeping it in the lab um, if it's never, if, you know, if, if in your view it should never be released into the environment? Uh, often what happens is the research that's done in the lab then informs non-GE work because you gain a lot of knowledge about the organisms and how they work and then you can use that knowledge in a non-GE way outside the lab. But wouldn't, okay, let's look at look at the um, the the wider view, I suppose. So, you know, the the population of the world is is booming, and um, and we've got some big problems with uh, resources coming up in, in the future, particularly food resources. Not enough food to go around. Scientists are saying that you know science and technology will get us through. Uh, one of the areas of science science and technology is uh, GE, and um, and GE can help produce more food for the world. Well, I mean, it's uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a gamble. Um, so we have the ability now to reduce the emissions coming out of dairying quite significantly by dealing with the intensification. Uh, so we've gone down a, what I would call an industrial dairy route where we add more fertiliser and more palm kernel and more electricity to pump all the irrigation and we have higher and higher stocking rates. Um, now, there's been some good work done, curiously, by ag research, but others looking at how you can cut emissions very significantly by reducing the intensity of dairying. Um, and, you know, that, that's something that we could do tomorrow if we wanted to mm. because all the technology is available to do that. But what about GE uh, as a solution to the world's food basket? Well, clearly, um, in terms of this particular one they're talking about, it might have some effect maybe in 15 years. Uh, so in terms of dealing with the issues, it's a long way away and it may or may not work. Remember, they haven't actually fed any of this stuff to cows yet, so they don't really know if it'll cut emissions or not. In terms of the bigger picture, um, I mean, you know, GE hasn't really worked out as people have hoped. Um, there's been marginal improvements in productivity in some crops and marginal drops and quite significant failures with some other crops. And, of course, we've had the emergence of super weeds, which was always inevitable. Um, That's the, the Roundup weedy, round weedy yeah. weeds, yeah. yeah. Well, they're multiple resistant now, So you know, because you have different GE crops that, um, give, that give resistance to different kinds of herbicides, and eventually those genes get out because you can't control it um, and spread to weeds. And so now you have weeds that are resistant to various herbicides, and obviously that's a real problem for farmers. So you know the GE story hasn't been all um, hasn't been at all like the, they were proposing, and has run into serious problems. And, and as you say, a lot of it is is a risk. But isn't it a, a risk worth taking? Um, if 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 we don't take it, uh, you know the the inevitable result is um, uh, death and starvation. <laughs> Um, yeah, either do this or it's the end of planet Earth. It's uh, <laughs> well. no, no. I would argue it, it isn't. They're not really our options at all. Um, so w whether you're talking about organic farming, uh, which uh, has proved you know really successful, gets you know much higher premiums, um, and ha looks after the soils and is a long-term sustainable approach to farming, or even biological farming, which a lot of conventional farmers in New Zealand are now using, which is a kind of not as 
doesn't go as far as organics, but um, is kind of going away from the super intensified path that dairy is going down generally in New Zealand. Mm. Um, there are much better options that look after the soil, which is really where our long-term future relies. If we don't look after our soils, we're going to always struggle to feed ourselves. But that's fine for us here in New Zealand, but um, for, for those starving in Africa or um, in Asia and places where uh, you know, land is at a premium, um, you know, they, 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 these are big issues. They're, they're big issues everywhere because, uh, you know, you're quite right. You know, there is a, the, the population is still growing, though hopefully it will start to flatten off after a while. Um, but uh, the, there is not a solution which says that, you know, we can somehow have a magic technical bullet which will solve these issues. Um, and we would argue that actually looking after the soil and having a long-term approach to it is fundamental to sustainable agriculture that can feed the planet. And that's where the focus needs to be. I mean, think about, you know, so you've got your feedlots, you know, massive feedlots in the United States. We're starting to go down that path a bit here. Um, they require huge amounts of grain, huge amounts of energy, produce massive amounts of waste. Um, that, in my view, is not the sustainable path to feeding people. So, you know, we, we have options about how we're going to feed people. And the most intensive, the most, uh, you know, technologically uh, dependent version isn't necessarily going to be the most successful. Russell Norman, thanks very much for your time this morning. My pleasure. co of the Greens, Russell Norman there with us.